welcome up Greg Moreno. I woke up to the sound of cockroaches fleeing as I turned on the light. I stumbled across the room to the bucket in the corner of the room where my brother and I kept our clothes. My scurried back into the hole to take shelter as I rummaged around for something to wear. As I made my way to the bathroom, wet carpet squelched under my feet. The carpet in our motel room was always wet, even though no one had spilled anything on it. This is where I sat for seven years, in a small, worn-out room in Morgan's motel. There was one bed which my brother and I shared, while my mom and dad slept on a foam pad in the closet. The motel, the motel room was in the City Heights, what the San Diego News once called the rotting core of San Diego. The neighborhood was full of gangster, gangsters who I would see, always see getting arrested. Most days, I woke up to the sound of police cars pulling in the driveway. The streets were filled with trash from the overfilled dumpsters, and every time I left the motel to go to school, I would see the drug addicts and drug dealers right outside my door. Being offered drugs and denied was my daily routine. One day when my brother and I got back from school, my mother was sitting on the bed. She wasn't working at the time. She was never able to get a job. She said, come sit. I need to tell you something. The first thing I said was, is it good news, bad news, or both? She replied, bad. We sat down and she began to tear up. Your father, he's been arrested. We sat in silence for 10 seconds. Then my mom followed up with, I'm gonna have to go to court and testify. My brother said, okay, holding back his tears while I just sat there in shock, wondering what would happen to our family. Knowing that my mother couldn't handle the weekly rent. That night, I went to sleep crying. I felt sad because I had lost my father and scared what was going to happen to our family next. The next day, I woke up to see an empty spot in the bed next to my mom, covered in used tissues filled with tears of sadness. At school, I acted as if nothing had happened the day before, but really, I was torn apart by what my father had done to my family. I was usually one of the funny ones in my group of friends, but everyone knew something was wrong with me when I wasn't cracking jokes at lunch or even talking to them. I couldn't take it anymore. I rushed out of the homeroom to go to the bathroom, punched the stalls because I was so angry and worried about where we were going to live. This, made, this feeling continued for seven years as my family struggled to get by. This made me feel unmotivated to do anything to change my future. Life in the motel became even harder. The manager would come, bang on our door, demanding the rent. And my mother would hide and tell us to say she was not there. We ended up moving from place to place, always asking our closest friends for money. I stopped asking, I stopped doing homework because of the stress. I stopped paying attention to school and then my grades dropped from a 3.36 to a 2.5 GPA. I always had a fake smile on my face because I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. But in reality, I wanted to collapse and cry. Instead of going out with my friends, I was staying inside watching prank videos on YouTube. I wanted to take the easy way out and become a YouTuber like Logan Paul or Roman Atwood. I had, to get, I had given up on my dreams and my goals for the future, which were going to college and to be the second in my family to graduate. A year later, I found myself living, living with my brother Ronald. Actually, we were living together in the home of one of our friends from school, a three-bedroom apartment where we shared a room with two other girls. To most people, it would have, it would have been a nightmare. But to me, this was a dream home, the kind I always wanted but never had. We no longer had to worry about the weekly rent or criminals outside our doors. Even though it wasn't very, wasn't very far from the motel, it felt like we were living in a different part of the world. Ronald was 17, a typical senior and an overachiever. He had curly hair with an oval shade birthmark near, near his left eye. He had recently, recently started working with the organization called Reality Changers the house low-income students become first-generation college students. He was always telling me about the great stuff they were doing and encouraging me to apply. He could see that my grades had dropped and I had become withdrawn from my closest friends. He felt the organization could help me. I told him I would, but I kept on procrastinating. I was afraid of submitting my application because the thought of interacting with new people scared me. This all ended a year and a half later when my brother brought the founder and president of Reality Changers to see me. His name was Chris Yanoff. 
He had dirty blonde spiky hair and was wearing a black suit with pony dress shoes. When he, was, when he walked in, I got nervous because I knew why he was coming to see me. He asked if we could speak outside in private. Hey, he said, your brother told me you haven't submitted your Reality Changers application yet. I've been busy, I, I said with a forced smile. Oh, really? He could tell I was lying. Yeah, I have, I promise. Okay, he said, just remember, it could change your future. I was feeling disappointed in myself because I had to wait until the president of the organization gave me a one-on-one -on -one talk in order to submit my application. I knew that if I wanted things to be different, then I needed to act differently. The next day, I submitted the application with a feeling of courage and relief. The, the day I got accepted to Reality Changers, my mom and I were sitting in the health clinic, healthcare clinic down the street from my home, filling out some papers. My brother came out of the bathroom looking excited. As he walked up to me, he handed me his phone like there is someone wanting to talk to me. I held, up, I held it up to my ear and heard, hey, is this Greg Moreno? Yeah, I said. How would you like to be part of Reality Changers? As I heard him say that, I looked directly at my brother and began to cry. I hugged my brother and mom. I felt pure joy and happiness because I knew I would be able to go to college. I knew that at that moment, I was going to become a reality changer. Thank you. Give it up for Greg Moreno.